Welcome back, everyone, to Real Estate 360 Live. I'm your host, Ryan Sloper, joined today by my guest, Luis Camarosano, the general manager of HomeGain. Quick reminder, the show is designed and dedicated to building the Washington, D.C. Metro's housing and credit markets one house at a time. If you ever have any questions, concerns, or real estate needs, the best number to reach out to us is 877 877- 245-2030. That's 877-245-2030. And that's, you know, if, you, if you're just looking to start your home search, your first-time home buyer, and unsure about what the steps should be, whether you should, you know, go online and just start looking for homes, or whether it's really important, like we always stress, to get pre-qualified and to know what your comfortable payment is before you get you know, too excited and, and, and jump uh, at a home that's much more than you could really afford. We're here to help you out with that and lead you in the right direction. Like I said, the off-air phone number is 877-245-2030 or visit us via the web at realestate360live.com. That's realestate360live.com. Now we're going to um, give you this week's market movers, and this segment was brought to you by HomeGain. HomeGain is the place to get you started buying or selling a home, finding a realtor, and getting real estate questions answered. Go to HomeGain.com today to see what I'm talking about. All you have to do is type in your home's address, and you'll get an instant free estimate of your home's value online. It's a great way to monitor your home's value, and it's totally free. So when you get a chance today, guys, check that out at HomeGain.com. So this week, um, the markets are going to get a second look at the Q3 GDP. Um, we're also going to have October new home sales, Octo- October durable goods orders, and the October personal income and spending. Now, um, technically, the bond and mortgage markets are a little bit weaker than they were a week ago. Uh, but you know, having said all that, I really don't think that interest rates are going to move up or down, uh, you know, probably more than an eighth or a quarter either way. Uh, I would say that you're, you know, you're probably good if you're, if you're, you know, thinking about locking in your mortgage interest rate or you're, you're floating because you feel like they're going to get much better. I would say that you're not going to probably see much movement one way or the other. Uh, obviously, the one caveat to all that is the whole you know, negotiations over the fiscal cliff. So that's something to keep your eye on is, is to watch you know, where, we, where we go with that. But I don't really think things are going to progress as fast um, as we would like anyway. Um, so you're probably safe at this point. Um, just keep an eye on that. Obviously, as we mentioned in the last segment, regardless of what takes place um, as far as these reports that come out, whether it's GDP, consumer spending, existing home sales, regardless of all of that, the Fed, as I mentioned, will always be there, at least at least for the next three, four, five, six, who knows, ten years, to really control and, and backstop the mortgage market. So even if these reports come out ugly or, or good and the stock market rallies and the bond market should get worse, it's not happening now. And I would think that this is going to be a trend that we see for the foreseeable future. Regardless of where things go, the Fed can step in and just ramp up their, their purchases of mortgage-backed securities to then push interest rates back down to where they want them. So while I do think it's important that you guys understand, okay, you know, what can you know, take interest rates up or down, we're not seeing the drastic moves. You know, we were used to – when the market was somewhat, you know, I want to call normal, Lewis, I mean, we'd see easily in a day interest rates moving, you know, it could be as much as a half. You know what I mean? And we're just not seeing that now. We haven't seen it for a while. Um, the volatility in the mortgage markets – it's not there because the Fed is backstopping it. Backstopping market it. Now, forces do not move the mortgage market. The Fed does. Right. And and now you mentioned and brought up a good point. You know, at, at some point, when do the markets stop buying into the Fed? You know, when, at what point does that happen? Well, when I, Japan, I'm not. And when Europe and everybody else collapses first. Yeah, when they that's all the only, collapse. That's the only reason the U.S. doesn't have a problem is because, in contrast, other fiat currencies and other central banks are doing a worse job. Right. And so we it seems like we're going to be like so last man standing so to speak where it's kind of like okay every every you know everybody else is failing and then we're basically the last one there and then everybody's going to turn to us and be like oh I guess they're worse than we were. Right? Um so you know, it's just a matter of time. Now, the timing is the big issue because everybody's like, well, you know, I, I hear you say that, but, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean tomorrow? Does that mean six months? Does that mean, I, you know, I don't have the crystal ball. I can just say on like a macro scale where I can see things going. I mean, this. They've pushed this out far longer than we would have imagined. Right. And, and, and now they can probably continue doing so. I mean, this could go on for the next two, three, four, five years. We don't, we don't know the exact time frame. All I can 
you know, we've tell you guys. Far, we've never been this far in debt, nor has any other country, all at once. No. They're and all, you know, over 100% of GDP. Right. right. I mean, it's, it's at astounding levels. And I think that, you know, at this point in time, okay, let's just not even worry about, you know, when it's going to happen, because it's inevitably going to happen at some point. But, you know, protecting yourself from that future inflation is about all that you can do at this point in time. Um, the central it, banks are saying they want inflation. They're going to do right. everything they can to create more inflation. It's very easy to do when you have unlimited access to printing money. Yeah, and if you've noticed all the inflation, I mean, it, it's going to create more bubbles again in, in real estate. It's going to create bubbles in the stock market. I mean, that's what we're seeing as the stock, stock market's been rallying. This is not, you know, your average everyday Joe's 401k that's invested in the stock market that's really driving up. These are, you know, a bunch of reserves and hedge funds and banks and everything that's sitting in the market now that's really driving it up. But that's going to come crashing down at some point as well. When, when, you, when you lose confidence in buying sovereign debt or you can't save your money because it's not worth saving it because of inflation, you get no interest rate in the bank, you have to put it either towards the stock market or – hard assets like real estate, gold, silver, and commodities. And that will eventually create a bubble in those asset classes. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, many people, you know, they'll they'll say to me, well, you know, when you when you guys mention buying gold and silver and real estate, I mean, really, aren't you just like fear mongers and, and basically trying to, to, you know, scare people into thinking that the, you know, the end is near? And that's not what we're doing here, actually. What we're trying to, to merely tell you guys is stating the facts of, you know, we we're, we're always spending more money than we're bringing in, and we're printing more money, you know, that and it's not actually making its way out there. So at some point, you know, your your currency is just basically worthless. And how long? Like I said, the timeline for all that we're we don't have that that firm deadline that could say, you know, okay, that's going to be in the next six months for sure because we. The Federal Reserve is basically, you know, the rest of the world doesn't have the luxury that we have because we can turn on and turn off that printing press at will. Japan, which basically, though, Japan actually has turned it over to the to the politicians, so they're kind of in conjunction with their central bank doing it. Well, essentially, it's almost kind of what we're doing anyway. I mean, our, our Congress is basically just giving them power to do what they are to let the Fed do what they want anyway. Right. I mean, the Fed doesn't, we, when when the United States spends money, the Fed monetizes it. Right, and I mean, if you look at look at what the massive problems that they've had over in Japan. I mean, they've had you know extended periods of of just you know market markets and economy not doing anything. They haven't been um, able to print their way out of the problem. They started out with a solid economy. They started out with um, you know good savings rates from the citizens of the country. But basically, they have a demographic problem where the people are getting older, fewer people are working, and they have a massive just like we have. Um, entitlement system for old age pensions that they won't be able to pay. And they'll just keep printing money and eventually, you know, the yen is a very strong currency and they're trying to weaken it too. And, and the reason they're trying to weaken it is because the United States has done such a good job of printing but keeping the value high that all the other countries are now also involved in the race to the base. So for your listeners, really, it only comes down to one thing. It's not fear-mongering. It's that when sovereign entities can print money at will, and, you know, the old expression, I remember when I was a kid, they used to say real estate's a good investment because they're not making any more of it. Well, it stands to reason that there's a limited amount of commodities in real estate, and there seems to be an unlimited amount of money. That would stand to reason that in relation to the two, the value of the commodities in real estate will go higher as they print more money. And there's nothing yeah. restraining them from doing that, and there is a natural restraint on the, the physical supply of commodities in real estate. Absolutely, and I mean, you know, especially you know, there's uh, that the interest rates that people can obtain real estate at at this point in time are phenomenally low. So it, it, it stands to reason that once inflation kicks in, um, you know, the if especially if people are buying real estate for investment purposes and they plan on buying it to 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 rent their property out, um, that they're going to probably see pretty solid returns because they can lock in a low fixed rate mortgage and be able to you know collect rents, which over the next you know two five ten year period of time we're going to see inflation levels rise. So rents will go up, their mortgage payment stays the same. They, you know they'll, they'll be able to somewhat. 
And here's a, here's a point on inflation. We already have inflation in the classical sense in that it's an increase in the money supply and, and credit. What we haven't seen yet is the velocity of that money hit the market. And that will happen as confidence is lost in the dollar and people want higher interest rates for lending money to the United States or other sovereign entities. And that's when the money will start to flow and start to go into other assets other than sovereign debt securities, which will create a bubble in the commodity assets, including real estate. Yeah, I mean, There'll be almost... no point in holding on to your dollars if they're going to be worth less the next day. So what happens in inflation is people want to get rid of their dollars and buy stuff that's going to hold its value. That hasn't happened yet, but once that does happen, then the velocity of money increases, and you get an increase in the rising of prices. Yeah, and I, wages I mean, will go up, but we'll have to keep up with inflation, and that's when you start to get an inflationary environment. But that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, the money is there. The money is out there. The inflation is there, and it's it's already reflected in the price of gas and food, but it hasn't reflected its, it, uh, itself throughout all of the finished goods. Yeah, I, it's you know, and I had mentioned previously that you know even you know a lot of food suppliers and food companies that actually you know they just scaled back the the amount of of food that they were giving in in any sort of package and and thus keeping the price the same. But realistically, that is an increase because you're getting less um, right. for the same dollar than you were getting before, and that's just you know the things that they'll they'll continue to hide to give the appearance that prices aren't rising. One twenty we're, for the price of two. Exactly. So we're, we're coming up on a break, guys. When we come back, um, we're going to dive more into the potential of FHA mortgage insurance premiums going up in 2013 and why you should buy now versus waiting for those increases. Stay right there. Are you or someone you know looking to buy or sell a home? When you use a home gain realtor to buy or sell a home, you can get $150. Visit HomeGain.com and click on the Promo 150 banner at the top of the page to get started. Compare HomeGain Realtors and choose your favorite. Complete your home purchase or sale transaction with the HomeGain Realtor, and HomeGain will pay you $150. Get started today by going to HomeGain.com. You're listening to Real Estate 360 Live with Ryan Sloper, the trusted name in real estate radio. Join Ryan every Monday on 1580 Gov.biz Radio from 9 to 10 a.m. He'll cover real estate from every angle under the sun. Call. 